Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I'd show you a little trick I cooked up today for, uh, you know, if you want to get some get get something going in one of your gardens but the soil hasn't completely thawed and if you've got something you can plant that's uh, okay with things being cold, um, peas is a good way to start. So I'm planting peas here. Uh, this is a snap pea. I like the sugar snap peas the most. And uh, the soil in this garden is not uh, thawed. Maybe the top inch is thawed and beneath that it's basically ice. So uh, I got a technique here that uh, that works um, when that's the case. Uh, now this garden was mulched and I had uh, some plastic over it to try to melt uh, thaw it out and it's been working to some extent. I've pushed the mulch aside so what I've got is a mound of mulch on either side of this little channel and um, I'm going to plant, and I put a stick down the middle. You can see I've got a stick there. Um, that's just so I, I plant the peas on either side of the stick, and I'll build a trellis in the middle that the peas can go up. So that's just to sort of make sure they're in the right spot, right? Just to keep me keep everything straight. Not that big a deal, but it's just easier that way. You don't have to do so much thinking. Um, so I've I've done a bunch of experiments this year, and I've I found that just uh, really, if, if you've got plastic over a garden, you're keeping the wind off of it and uh, the soil is dark um, it's probably the best way one of the easiest ways to thaw it out I mean, there's lots of different techniques but the, for, well, for what i'm doing right here i use lots of different things in lots of different ways but I'm, what i'm doing right here in this particular garden this is the easiest way to get it going and this is how i plant peas um, I've, I've read lots of stuff about soaking them and doing all this I, I just don't bother i don't i don't see the point i mean it's it's just so much easier just to stick them in the ground and all i do is i basically plug them in with my thumb I, they, the pea is barely beneath the surface. Really, whatever the size of the pea is, that's about how far it should be in the ground. And I'll put a little bit of earth on top of that for a number of reasons that I'll discuss as we go along here. Um, but that's a general approach, right? Plug the seed into the ground, um, so it's basically in the ground and, and very close to the surface, but in the ground. Um, so the seed's not not deep below the ground, and it's not above the ground. It's just in the ground. If that makes any sense. Um, and uh, once you've finished doing that, uh, you know, I like to get some nice black earth. I got some compost here. I just put that on top. That way, I know if something's been planted there. It just makes it that much darker, so the soil can warm up. And I, I just got confidence in that approach. I could just leave them. I'm sure they they germinate anyway. But this is just something I do. You don't have to do this. Uh, I just feel more confident in everything working out if I put a little fine layer, like a quarter inch, right? Then once that's done, you just rinse, wash, and repeat until you've done the whole area. So I'm going to fast forward this. Alright, so I got that all nicely watered and everything, and now what I'm going to do, and this is just something I, I, I came up with this year, I think it'll work great. You, you put sticks across that little valley, right? You've got like a tiny valley, almost like a, in a sense, you're sort of making a very miniature wallapini <laughs> garden, because it's, it's a sunken garden that's, uh, you know, has a, a solar uh, exposure in a sense, right? Uh, why am I putting this uh, these spruce boughs? So that's just leaves and other uh, rubbish like that on the sides. And uh, by putting the uh, spruce boughs over the leaves, it almost acts like a snowshoe. So it'll, it'll distribute the uh, the weight that is being borne by those sticks. Now I've got the sticks on there just to prevent the uh, the uh, plastic on those. Uh, this is just you know plastic rectangles, a rectangle wooden frame with a piece of uh, six mil poly put over it. Uh, the sticks that I'm laying across will just keep the uh, plastic there from uh, bowing and gathering water and just keep it up off the soil. So I guess I'm measuring, I'm doing a crude measurement here with my hand, and I'd say I got about six inches of space. So that is to say, there's a nice little air pocket underneath there that can get heated up by the sun. Uh, there's enough room for the peas to grow for a, a good little while before I have to take these off. Uh, so I think. In the amount of time it's going to take the peas to germinate and grow, the soil will continue to thaw out. And by the time I have to take those plastic squares off, 
the soil will be uh, properly thawed and um, you know uh, it'll be all ready. This is a garden I'm going to plant uh, beans in so I'm going to have a big trellis going down the middle. The peas are going to go up the trellis because peas are always earlier than your beans. I'll plant the beans more like uh, late May, early June and I'll also plant, so I'll plant bush beans in the entire area and I'll plant uh, pole beans down the center and they'll go right up the same as the peas. And, uh, and that's a good way to do a kind of session garden. I haven't planted bean, uh, beans or peas in this garden for years. So it's a great way to give the soil a break. Uh, they're really not heavy feeders. If anything, they, they add plenty of arguments that they add nitrogen in the soil. So uh, it's just a good way to give a garden a little break. Um, so I hope you found that interesting. It gave you a good tip to get out there and get things started. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it, find something to do outside. Thanks for watching.